Hello everyone, welcome to Rhino Feed. Today I'm going to review the Logitech G502 gaming mouse. Let's start with the ergonomics. The shape is designed for right-handed use only, but the shape is made to work with all grip styles. Personally, I prefer the slightly flatter and wider shape on the Corsair M45 for fingertip grip. I feel like this mouse is better suited for palm grip. I love the thumb rest on the G502, but my ring and pinky finger feel cramped. I do have pretty long fingers, so that could be why. Logitech specs say the weight of this mouse without the extra weights or cable is 121 grams. I did my own testing and it was closer to 128 grams. This is just a bit too heavy for my tastes, even before adding the extra 5 3.6 gram weights that are included. If you really wanted to add those weights, it would make the mouse 145 grams in my testing. In contrast, I use the M45 with no weights installed, and it is only 98 grams. You can install the weights easily by lifting off the cover on the bottom of the mouse. The cover even has a magnet that will keep it closed. Every button on the mouse is well placed. You'll find DPI adjustment buttons to the left of your clicker, the hyperfast scroll wheel in the middle, which has both a middle click and tilt for horizontal scrolling. Underneath that, there is a button that switches from hyperfast mode to clicky mode, and then you'll find the profile switcher button. There are back and forward buttons on the left side, and also a quick DPI adjustment button, which is both easy to reach and not in your way. I've never accidentally hit it. Your right and left clicks have Omron switches with a consistent feel across the entire clicker button. There's also a few LEDs on the mouse. You'll find the Logitech G logo and the DPI adjustment bars. Interestingly, these turn a darker blue color when you're changing profiles, but they are a lighter blue color when changing DPI. You can turn off the G logo LED entirely, which is a nice option if you don't want distracting LEDs. Its top feature is the sensor which is the PMW3366. This is an optical infrared LED that runs all the way up to 12,000 DPI with no smoothing or acceleration. There's not a lot to say other than it's impressive. I love the performance and feel of this sensor. In fact, it's the only other sensor I've tried that feels just as responsive and accurate as the PMW3310, which used to be my favorite sensor of all time. All that being said, I would never use it at 12,000 DPI, that's gotta be there just for bragging rights. It also has a high quality braided cable that's much thicker than most. We'll see over the long term, but I expect it to be incredibly durable. Personally, I don't find it getting in the way or feeling heavy, but I've always used corded mice. Alright, so let's take a look at the software. The first thing you'll notice is that there is onboard memory stored on the mouse, or automatic game detection, which is all of your profiles stored on the computer instead. And the settings actually look a little bit different for each. So first of all, I will go through the onboard memory. Go to the next tab here. You'll see you have up to three profiles. You have up to five DPI sensitivity levels, and you can turn that to only one if you'd like, or all the way up to five. You have all of your different ranges. You can type them in. It's, it's by 50, so lowest is 200, and then it goes by 50. Pretty cool there. And then um, you can assign which one you'd like as your default DPI. And then when you switch through these, you just go back and forth. And which one is your shift DPI, which is this orange one. And that's the one that happens when you press this thumb button or the sniper button as Corsair likes to call it. You have your polling rate, obviously goes up to 1000. And then all these different buttons can be customized to your liking with different macros. So you just hit this little down arrow and click edit. You have a lot of default button option choices here, even volume up and volume down, which is pretty useful. You have keystrokes. So you type in the keystroke you'd like, or there are some default options to choose from there as well. And multi-key macros, you can choose between recording the delays or no delay at all. So all you have to do is start recording. Click OK. Go back to Notepad and boom. You have a super fast macro. It's pretty sweet. And then use generic. Obviously go to the default option. But there's one thing I want to show you here and that is the G-Shift option 
which is pretty cool. So when you hold this down with the G shift option enabled, now you have a complete new layer that can be programmed. So that gives you even more options to deal with. So anyway, the next tab, you have your lighting settings, you have brightness, you can turn the G logo off completely, which is kind of nice, or you can have full brightness, which gets entirely too bright, way too bright. You have a breathing effect, DPI lighting, which are these little lights here. You can have those always on or only on when you press the buttons. And then the lighting sleep timer, which is pretty self-explanatory. Next option is your surface tuning. So I, I programmed this for the Corsair MM200, which I have. It's pretty easy. You hold down the mouse button and do a figure eight pattern for a little bit. Then it figures it out and analyzes it and all that kind of stuff. I don't notice a difference though, really, honestly. Um, it was pretty responsive before I even did the surface tuning, but maybe it would make more sense because you could put this on your desk, which has a different, like a mouse mat, it's gonna work pretty, pretty well no matter what, where a wooden desk might benefit from doing the surface tuning. Then you have your heat map, which you can just play or stop or whatever, and it records your clips, clicks per minute and what buttons you're hitting and all that kind of stuff. Um, I don't really see what the purpose of this is, but it's here. Then you have basic little settings like run the program when the window starts and quick macros, illumination, graphics, scan for games, angle snapping, which you don't want, profiles, arcs control, and that's about it there. Uh, let's go back to the home page here and view the automatic game detection. So the first time you launch this, it will scan through your hard drive for any kind of games that you have. And there they are, right up top here. It didn't find all of them, but you can add your own and even apps too. So you click create new profile. Say I had my own personal Photoshop key command. You just click this plus button. You select the app. And there you go, now your profile is linked to the app. You have even more commands over here, so let's just assign a new command. You have keystrokes with even repeat options, so while pressed or toggle, multi-key keystrokes, same kind of macro recording basically, text blocks, mouse functions, lots of those, media functions, hotkeys, shortcuts, the same kind of stuff laid out a little bit different. Functions, there's a little bit more here that isn't in the in the other settings, interesting. And even hooks up with uh, Ventrilo. So other than that, you have unlimited profiles this way because they're stored all on your computer, where the other way, you're limited to three on the mouse itself. All right, so that's about it for the software. Thank you very much for watching my review. I hope you've enjoyed. And as always, please rate, comment, and subscribe.